All right, folks, welcome back on the Mysterious JG. We are accidentally getting a good look at my desktop, which doesn't have anything embarrassing on it, fortunately. But um, we, uh, we're in the engine room here, and uh, if we go southeast, we can get into the control room, look at the controls. Maybe there's a puzzle we need to solve, figure out how to slow things down. The light displays hold no meaning for you. A random number generator may be controlling the whole thing for all you know. All right, we'll get the scroll. Uh, there was a spell called XX, which makes us fast. XX self. You feel energetic and zippy. Northwest. You rush across the engine room. Your speed enabling you to avoid the gigantic hammers and gears. At this speed, they appear to move with great deliberation. Unfortunately, you set off a trap, and many sharp spheres fly at you from all directions. They seem to move pretty fast, and too fast, in fact. You can't dodge them, and you are severely skewered. So, you'd think the XX spell would have helped. But... Apparently that's not enough. I know how to solve this one, folks, but another one that I doubt that I managed to figure out on my own. We're at the south gate. There are really, uh, there's really two directions we haven't explored. Uh, there's a whole translucent, the translucent rooms. And that's a word I learned from this game, translucent. It's actually a really cool word, but the translucent rooms form a little maze. But we haven't actually come across yet what it is that you actually can use to do anything there. Because I already told you we're not going to bother to go down there and wander around them and waste the turns. But they form just like this little area down there. They're connected, a couple of rooms connected to each other, interconnected. But they don't lead to anywhere else. They're just a bunch of translucent rooms with no items in them. So that'll come up later. There's that door, you may recall, with the um, super powerful magical defense, like, you know, chains, and there's gargoyles and monsters and tentacles and stuff, and when you open the door, even if you try to open the door, demons come out and kill you and stuff. We haven't figured out what to do with that, although that could be just a red herring joke. And we haven't, at this point, figured out how we're going to get through to Krill. Although we might be able to do something with that now. Uh, didn't we learn a uh, prevent harm by uh, protect, protect user from harm? Let's let's learn Melbor. Melbor self. A wave of warmth courses through you, leaving you with a feeling of great internal strength. Now let's try going north through the junction. Ah, I guess this is it. If you go north of the banquet hall, you get to the junction. The corridor widens here to form a large hall. To the north and south are small passages, and to the east is what appears to be an enormous spiral staircase. A passage to the west leads to the courtyard. The walls here are scarred and black, and a strange heaviness hangs in the air. If you'll recall, we go north. We're in that library. If we go south, we're at the junction again, and we go east, we're at the landing. So we've now done a complete circuit around the castle. I guess it was the, I think it was the Melbourne spell that let us do that. If we tried to go north from the... Um, banquet hall or south and library before, I think we automatically get captured. Everything you see is gray and lifeless, as though covered with a veil of ash, etc., etc. The wall is cylindrical here, with, with exits east and west. The eastern one opens into a dark, enclosed space. The air is thick with acrid smoke, and black, greasy ashes mar the floor. The mortar and stones of the walls are stained and crumbly. Uh, look at walls. The wall is stained and noisome. Go east. Winding stair. This is a winding stair, stretching up and down out of sight. The walls are mossy and damp, and exit leads west to the landing. Here's the thing with these stairs. You go down, you descend the stairs, making one circuit of the tower. This is a winding stair, stretching up and down out of sight. The walls are mossy and damp. You can keep going forever, in either directions. The, the winding stair is an infinite. Whether you go up or down, it's infinite which is why we're not going to bother to mess with it now. So there's something up with the winding stair. The winding stair, you would think, would either lead you down to some kind of basement level, or it would take you up to this black turret. This is where Krill seems to be. It's where the evil magic's coming from. But uh, you can climb the stairs forever, and you never get anywhere. So there's something magical preventing us from proceeding, I think. But now we're back down at the engine room. Let's go down. Let's go west. I was starting. To, I was saying before. Sorry. There's the translucent room maze. We haven't done anything with that. 
There's some kind of adventure wandering around in the Hall of Mirrors. There may be something we need to do with him. There is the door with, like, tentacles and gargoyles and crazy crap. And then the only rooms that we haven't really looked at um, are south of the south gate. So let's go south. Meadow. Everything you see is gray and lifeless. And there's a faint acrid odor. That is a generic description that it starts putting, after a certain number of moves, it starts putting that in everything, basically to tell you that Krill is the spell is nearing completion, you must hurry. But then it conflicts with the regular description, because then it goes into the regular description. If we went to the meadow earlier, that would not have appeared, and we would have simply seen, this is a meadow to see, there's a the smell of salt in the air, not a faint acrid odor, only heather and thistles grow here. To the north is a gate heather. To the north is a gate leading into the castle. A narrow path to the southeast leads to the shore of the sea. The stars shine down on you from a clear, dark sky. We'll go southeast. Beach! This is a rocky beach along a gray and lifeless sea. There is a dead seaweed covering many rocks, and listless waves barely stir the flotsam and jetsam here. There are many shells, but all are broken. All shells are broken like the first morning. A narrow path to the northwest leads into a meadow. The stars shine down. Yeah. Crawling slowly along the beach is an enormous turtle, his enameled shell shining with all the colors of the rainbow. Pet turtle. The turtle seems to appreciate the attention. Read book. And let's try... Um, to learn Knitfall and Knitfall the turtle. Using your best study habits, you learn the Knitfall spell, Knitfall turtle. The rainbow turtle looks at you for a moment, and you look at it. Hello, it says. Turtle. Hello. That's how you talk to creatures in this game. You type the name of the creature, comma, and then what you want to say. It's nice to find a human who talks turtle. Not many do, you know. Most people think turtles are boring, just because we talk slowly. Turtle. Help me. <laughs> I don't know the word help. Apparently neither is the turtle. Turtle, follow me. The turtle hisses. I, I will follow you. I will follow you. Northwest of the meadow, the stars shine down on you from a clear dark sky. The turtle at his own leisurely pace follows you. North. The turtle at his own leisurely pace follows you. East. Because I have figured something out, folks. We, even with the speed spell, when we hit a certain trap in that room, we get skewered with arrows and spikes. I'm not trying to send the turtle to its death, but you think maybe the turtle with its shell would survive that better than we would? Let's find out. East, the turtle at his own leisurely pace follows you. Up. Engine room. Pretty steep stairs for a turtle, friend, but if you say so. Let's save, because I'm pretty sure you can mess up and kill the turtle. Turtle. Go southwest. I can't go that way. Sorry, turtle. Go southeast. The poor turtle starts, but he's just too slow. About halfway across the room, he is dispatched by the enormous hammer, leaving only a rainbow-colored smudge on the floor. Even that disappears at the next blow of the hammer. The rainbow turtle has died. Weep. I don't know the word weep. Restore. Learn. XX. XX. Turtle. The rainbow turtle shimmers, then vibrates in place for a few seconds, but doesn't take any notice of the change. Turtle. Go southeast. Get scroll. Go northwest. Drop. Scroll. As the turtle starts across, he seems to set off something, for the machinery speeds up and the noise level becomes almost unbearable. Luckily, he makes it to the other side safely. Crash! A huge hammer smashes against the stone floor. The turtle sticks his head through the door across the mechanical wasteland, and his mouth is a scroll of some sort. The turtle fairly zips across the engine room, dodging the giant hammers and years. Suddenly, he sets off a trap, and sharp spears fly at him from all directions, but they bounce harmlessly off his shell. He avoids one last crash of a huge hammer, but even at his speed, it's a near thing. With one more burst of speed, he reaches you safely. Crash, a huge hammer smashes against the stone floor. The turtle drops a brittle scroll at your feet. Not bad, huh? I'm only a turtle, you know, even if I can talk. Thank turtle. 
Glad to be of help. I think I'll get back to the sea now. The turtle departs. Get scroll. Read scroll. And as we already saw, it's the Colcat. Dispel a magical spell. Let's go down. Let's go north. Let's go west, because we can't go north. Let's read our spell book. Let's learn... Well... Let's see what happens if you don't learn Melbourne and you go north to the East Hall. Banquet Hall. Well, apparently it will let us go through. Maybe after we survive getting killed uh, at the, you know, sacrificial thingy. But it seems to me like if you try to do this before, it doesn't work. But anyway, we are allowed to go to the junction now. That's nice. Uh... No, never mind. Once we try to leave this room... I think if we try to leave that room, uh, for those of you actually watching the screen, you'll see that when I go north, the host of Hunch and Harry Shapes walks into the hall before you can do anything, and seeing you take you into their arms and score you to the west into a huge temple, and you up, end up in the cell again, and you're going to end up being killed. So, if I want to cut across here, I'm going to have to learn Melbourne. Melbourne self. Now we can go. Now we can enter and leave the junction without getting killed. We'll go to the north gate, which gets a description again, only because of the gray and lifeless whatever. Now we're at the guarded door room. Here's the deal with the guarded door room, and this is probably the biggest place in this game where you can get set up in an unwinnable situation. Let's look at this door again guarded door is closed. Fine. Look at the room. A more incongruous place than this would be difficult to believe. The room itself is nothing more than a small room at the base of the northeast tower with a narrow passageway entering from the west standing in front of you. To the north, however, is a door surpassing anything you could have imagined. For starters, it's a massive lock is wrapped in a dozen six-inch thick iron chains. In addition, a certain five-headed monster sporting razor-sharp spears for tongues seems to be embedded within its heavy oak frame. One is almost embarrassed to mention the gargoyle spewing flame and sulfurish ash, which ornament either side of the door or the 97 slimy groping tentacles, which taunt you ever closer to certain death. A sign floating serenely above the door and glowing hideously in purple letters offers the following rude understatement. Don't bother. Learn Kulkad. Alright. Kulkad. Door. Kulkad dispels a magical spell, right? As you cast a spell, the brittle scroll vanishes. As the last syllable of the Colcad spell echoes through the chamber, the door itself seems to dissolve. Slowly at first, then quickly, each of its rather unlovely ornaments turns pale, then transparent, then nothing. What remains is a simple wooden door, which is standing shut. You can you move hesitantly towards the door, nothing. You pause for a moment to regain your composure. A dull aching fills your head, and your mind is again probed more deeply than when you entered the castle. Belbaz appears before you, hard and stern. While you have quested for Krill's lair, the circle has not been idle. We have tried to shield your presence from him. Sorry. <clears throat> While you have quested for Krill's lair, the circle has not been idle. We have tried to shield your presence from him, but your use of such a powerful spell might endanger us all, as we have sensed it. So surely must Krill be careful, brave enchanter. His image fades. Well, how the hell does he expect you to win if you're not going to do anything, you know, difficult or cool? Use awesome spells. Open door. Up. And we're in the map room. Here's the problem. Hey, no problem. There is a problem, folks. And uh, for anyone who's curious, because I, I pulled this out of something else, like I used it in the Mayfet conspiracy and ended it up. If the thing can ever come together, I, I can't get Camtasia to actually do it. But my uh, montage of clips from my 1,000 subscriber special includes at one point someone saying to Kogo 13, No problem! That comes from Seedrot's flashback in the space bar. It was like the only part of that flashback I enjoyed was the fact that she calls a salesperson and is, he was like constantly saying, No problem! He's like so excited and happy to help. Uh, I'm not going to bother to read the description of the map room because we shouldn't be here yet. We shouldn't be here yet because we just made the game unwinnable. We just made the game unwinnable because there is another way to get past that door, but there, then using the cult cat spell, which dispels magic. But there is not another way to get past the infinite staircase that we came across. We need the cult cat spell to 
get rid of the illusionary, magical, whatever staircase nonsense that will allow us to actually properly penetrate Krill's lair. And we've just used it to get past this door where there is another way. So we've lost the game, and we need to restore. Where are we now? We're at the guarded door. Let's read our spell book. Actually, yeah, let's read our book. You remember in the Hall of Mirrors we saw an adventurer? Let's see if we can't do anything with him. Learn. There's a spell that will um, magically summon a being. Let's learn Zifmia. Well, just for shits and giggles, let's Zifmia Belbaz. A vision of the great Belbaz begins to take shape before you, but with a curt word and a waggle of his finger, he disappears again, shaking his head in disappointment. Alright, well, let's learn Zifmia again. Let's Zifmia Krill. He feeds lots of fish, you know. <laughs> the warlock Krill appears before you, staring in astonishment. Who is that who disturbs my slumber? Oh, it is only you, secondary school sorcerer. He points a finger and chants a spell. You are cast into the endless void. You have died. You awaken among the members of the circle. Belboss and Necromancer looks tired and scattered about. Are the remains of the components of a spell of great healing power? The other members of the circle are pleased to see you revived, but worried by the setback. I think Krill is too powerful, says one. This experience was never a feat so puissant as he. Quiet discussion ensues with well concealed acrimony beneath the surface. Belboss tilts his head as if sensing something am is amiss. He examines your possessions and is taken aback. You have acquired a spell of great power. Using spells of this kind requires surpassing wisdom. With a wave of his hand, the scrolls disappear. Yeah, he takes away the, the the game. Really, I don't get some of the things that they do. Like, I understand logically why maybe Belboz wouldn't want you to have this magical spell, but the notion that they send you to defeat Krill, but then consistently take away powerful spells when you require them. You need to have that spell to win the game, so you need to not get killed after the point where you get that spell. Because if you get killed after the point where you get that spell, you stop getting free redos, and... Um, you lose the ability to win the game because they take away the spell scroll that you need. However, to be really dickish about it, they don't tell you that the game is unwinnable. They send you back into the game no longer able to win the game. This was a big problem in these early games. Modern games, at least ones that are like done professionally, released commercially. The Sadly, the, the puzzle adventure genre is all but gone, but... Um, the ones that are still around, they remember this, and they are generally very careful not to create these situations. Learn Zifmia. Zifmia Adventurer. If you remember from Thaumaturgy 201, summoning of beings works only if the being can be seen, unless the being possesses great magic of his own, which basically is why you're allowed to play the stupid game with Belbaz and Krill. So let's go west. West, back into the Hall of Mirrors. On the other side of the mirror, a bedraggled adventurer comes into view, carrying a brass lantern and an elvish sword, which is glowing dimly. He stops and stares in your direction. The adventurer, after checking his compass, walks off. So we have to follow him. From the other side of the mirror, a bedraggled adventurer comes into view, carrying a brass lantern and an elvish sword, which is glowing dimly. He stops and stares in your direction. Learn Zifmia. And this is this is an irritating part of the game. During your turn where you learn Zifmia, he can walk off. Zifmia Adventurer. All at once, the bedraggled adventurer appears before you, brightly glowing sword in hand. His jaw has dropped and his eyes are bulging. His eyes dart this way and that, as if looking for a way to escape. Show. I'm going to cut to the chase here. Oh, maybe I'll save the game and show you some of the ways that you can screw this up. There is a spell that will make him your friend. Um... You can also turn him into a, a small amphibian. That doesn't help you, because you don't want his items, and I don't think you get them anyway. Although, let's see what happens if you do that. Learn Cleesh. He leaves heading west. This is what's irritating. He starts wandering around as an NPC, free, exploring. And you have to follow him around until you have another turn to actually do something with him. There is a bedraggled event and weary adventurer standing here. He's carrying a sword and a brass lantern. The adventurer attempts to eat his sword. I don't think it would agree with him. Cleesh adventurer, and hope that we can still remember the spell. The adventurer turns into a fairly large newt, which scuttles off and is lost to sight. Get all. 
I don't know what you're referring to. See? The Elvish Sword and the Lantern, if you think they're the key to solving anything, they disappear. You can't you can't get them from him by turning them into a newt or something. Let's read the book. Let's learn the spell that makes him our friend. Actually, that is the Vaxum. So let's restore and not spend a turn reading the book. Learn the Vaxum. Vaxum Adventurer. The adventurer smiles at you with an air of goodwill. The adventurer eyes your possessions intently. A gaunt, feral-looking dog carrying a well-chewed bone approaches, is startled by your presence, growls, and turns tail. Weird. Adventurer, follow me. Sorry, but I've got better things to do than follow you. The adventurer leaves the room, heading to the west. See? Even when you turn him into your friend, he doesn't follow you. What happens if you tell him that before... I'd sooner follow Dimwit Flathead. This is why I mentioned earlier you need to get some treasure. You can give it to him, and it makes him like you, but he still won't follow you. Give Adventurer egg. We don't need the egg anymore. The Adventurer eyes you suspiciously. Why, he thinks, is a sorcerer handing me something, especially something valuable. The Adventurer leaves the room, heading west. So he just wanders off. He's going into the courtyard now. Adventurer, follow me. And I can't type. You can't see any adventurer here. It's all one word. Oh, because he headed northeast. The adventurer is like wandering around into places where he can get killed. I don't think he can't get killed, but... Adventurer... Follow me. <laughs> I'd sooner follow Dimwit Flathead. The adventurer waves his sword menacingly in your direction. So, making him your friend, giving him treasure, none of these things will make him follow you. It's another thing I couldn't quite figure out as a kid. I think I, at one point, summoned... I, I managed to figure out... I don't even know if I thought it was useful or if I just thought it was supposed to be a fun joke, but I did summon him when I was a kid, but I couldn't figure out what to do with him. So we've now restored to where we just summoned him from the mirror world. Show adventurer egg. The dagger will also work. He ignores you pointedly. Okay, maybe we have to make him our friend and then show him the egg. The idea is that we have to make him interested in our treasure and that he'll follow us around. The adventurer smiles at you with an air of goodwill. The adventurer, not overly tactful, asks to see what you're holding. See, it doesn't always give you that. That's a little. That's a pretty big hint. Although it could appear to just be a joke, so you wouldn't always get it. Zork does that a lot. It'll throw in, it'll give you hints, but it'll make them kind of cute and funny, so that you think they're just a joke. Which I, I approve of that. Let's show Adventurer Dagger. His eyes light up at the sight of the sacrificial dagger. The adventurer asks you what you would be needing treasures for. East. The adventurer eyes your possessions. Ah, there's a dragon where adventurer is carrying a sword and a brass lantern. He seems pleased to see you and frequently smiles in your direction. He eyes your possessions intently. East. He starts. F he's following us now. The adventurer offers to relieve you of some of your possessions. East. North gate. The adventurer eyes your possessions intently. East. Guarded door. There is a bedraggled and wary adventurer standing here. He is carrying a sword and a brass lantern. He seems pleased to see you and frequently smiles in your direction. The, advancer, the adventurer glances around the room in a business like, sorry, in a business like way, and makes a few notes on his map. The adventurer, not overly tactful, asks to see what you're holding. Your stomach is starting to grumble. Ask adventurer about door. I don't know the word about. Ask adventurer door. That sentence isn't one I recognize. Okay. What I'm driving at here is that the adventurer doesn't seem to have responded to the door. And if you remember the dream, a simple cartoon figure opened a simple door. Adventurer, open door. As you motion towards the monstrous door, the adventurer follows the imaginary line which proceeds th thence from your outstretched arm. The seemingly fearless adventurer shrugs and walks pointedly, purposefully towards the door, ignoring all harm to his person in the form of knives, tentacles, and molten lead. As three buckets of the ladder pour over his head, he casts you a perplexed look. 
Did you try the doorknob? he asks, as twenty-seven knives delicately skewer him. Before you can answer, he reaches for one of the gargoyle heads, which, by sheer coincidence, has just flooded him in a red-orange flame, and turns it gently. I think it's unlocked, he says, stoically ignoring the host of human-sized rats which feed on his incinerated torso. <laughs> this is way better, in my opinion, than uh, Beatles the size of a child's fist. Human-sized rats feeding on his incinerated torso. <laughs> and this is the kind of thing you can do easily in a text adventure. His left arm... His left hand, broken and bloodied, pulls at the gargoyle head. I'm going on ahead, he cries, opening a simple wooden door. Wooden door? You rub your eyes for a moment and look again as he goes through. Yes, just a plain wooden door. And that's it, folks. Come up with your own explanations. Uh, as far as I can make out, what's happening here is that the adventurer is not from this world and this spell is some kind of illusion. Maybe it only affects wizards and enchanters like yourself. Maybe it just doesn't affect someone from this other world that he comes from. But, um, clearly you come from some kind of slightly different world, because he's on the other side of this mirror. So, I mean, Zork and Enchant are supposed to take place in the same world, sort of, kind of. And, uh, Belboz, I think, pops up in Zork Grand Inquisitor. This is just a generic wizard figure from the past who's telling you stuff. But, uh, no, when I look at this, I'm thinking, um maybe it has to do with him coming from another world or maybe it's just the spell only affects enchanters but clearly the adventurer didn't even recognize that there was some kind of magical spell at work he was able to see the reality which is, is a simple wooden door he opened it and we got through there's no way to get the adventurer to follow you I forget why it doesn't work exactly but you can't get the adventurer to follow you through to uh, the staircase although now I'm kind of curious as to what would happen if you did but I just saved the game and I think once he accomplishes what he's supposed to do, I believe he stops following you. So, we've pretty much used up the adventurer as an ally. As the RTK menu music that I used to sync my video, and it's also going to be my indication that it's time to split the video here. Because I'm calling it a video, folks. When we come back, uh, depending on how quickly I move through this, we're very close to the end now. Uh, we're going to get some stuff in this room that we just accessed, thanks to the help of our stalwart adventurer friend. Um, the stuff in that room, very mild spoilers, is going to be this... I mentioned that we have to interact with the translucent rooms. That's really the only area of the map we haven't done anything yet with yet, unless you count the spiral stairs, which leads to Krill's chamber, and is obviously going to be one of the very last things we deal with. So we're running out of places to go and do new stuff. The game is almost over. Uh, if I don't take too much time dallying about or just chit-chatting about nothing, the next video is probably going to be it. Uh, so let's go ahead and call it a video when we come back, folks. Uh, I might go slightly long, or I might take two videos, but we should be very close to the end of uh, Let's Play Enchanter. This is Mysterious JG. I want to thank you guys very much for watching or listening, whatever you're doing, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.